I started as the first staff makeup artist in the television industry at NBC in New York City. Uh, television was then in one tiny little radio studio. It grew so fast that uh, five years later, I had uh, 20 makeup artists in my makeup department, and we were busy as we could be. But television went by pretty quickly. I was there at NBC for 14 years. Uh, then in the 1960s, I left television and I was mainly working in films, but occasionally doing television. And I got a call from uh, Dark Shadows. I was asked to do this uh, special sequence for Dark Shadows in which Jonathan Frid, um, uh, Barnabas Collins, uh, the character, the vampire, uh, suddenly ages to be like 150 years old and stays that way for a while. So it was quite a challenge and uh, uh, I've done aging makeup before that for television and some films and but this was even I mean 150 years old that's pretty unusual so it was it was fun it was a bit of a a uh, bit of a rush. After all, this is for a TV series and not a big budget kind of thing like a big film production. But um, uh, I did a complete transformation using what we call makeup appliances, which are pieces of flesh-like foam rubber that are molded to fit on the actor's face and to um, change the shape of it. Uh, and they covered his face completely um, with all the wrinkles and the jowls and the sagging parts that an old person has and a, a balding head. But I covered it. Um, it was bald to cover his own hair. And then I put a white wig on top of it because we were afraid, Dan Curtis and I, that with such a transformation that, um, that he wouldn't be recognizable. You wouldn't know it was Barnabas anymore. So we did the wig. Uh, in the style that he had his hair at his younger stage. Uh, doing a transformation, as I did on Jonathan, starts with making a life mask of the actor. Uh, on the life mask, in other words, a plaster reproduction of the actor's face, you sculpt every change that you want to make. You take plastiline and you model, say, uh, an old hooked nose. Uh, you make a, you, you put plastic on the forehead and you model wrinkles in it. Uh, you do the jowls, you do everything, and you sculpt that as realistically as you possibly can, putting every little pore, every little wrinkle uh, in this. When that is all done, and that takes a lot of time, usually days of careful sculpture, with uh, reference to photographs of real old people so that you do it in an anatomically sound way, when you've done all that, then you make very careful molds uh, of this sculpture. And then you remove the clay from it. And this leaves a hollow chamber between the uh, mold and the life mask. And then you make foam latex by uh, beating up a certain latex compound with a mix master until it's like whipped cream and putting that into the mold and closing up, close up the mold and the life mass together so that this is now pushed into the space where your clay model was originally. So it takes on that same shape. You put it in an oven and you bake it for several hours and that cures the rubber. When you open the mold, you take out this piece or number of pieces, depending on your number of molds, and um, they now have a interior shape that fits precisely on the actor's face, and the outside now has a new exterior, which is the old face. Gluing these on, now Jonathan was a wonderful uh, subject for this. He has a very good face. Uh, it has no difficult things to age. I mean, a person, say, with, say, very thick, youthful lips, it would be hard to cover up. Or uh, uh, other things might make it difficult to age them. In any case, Jonathan had a very good face for this sort of transformation. 
and he was very patient, very cooperative, good guy to work with. That really helps. Um, so putting on the makeup is also a trial on the actor. He has to sit still for hours. In this case, this is a very complicated makeup, covering really all his face and head. So it took, I guess, I, it's a long time ago now, but I think it was about three, three and a half hours. Once it's all glued on and painted and the hair put on, etc., uh, then it's, it, it will last uh, for eight or ten hours, sometimes more. Uh, when you're finished, then you have the cleanup process, and that can last for an hour or so, because it's really glued on well. Anyway, Jonathan was very cooperative and uh, very effective, I thought, and it was, a, it, was a, it was a very, you know, fun job to do. As a matter of fact, it was kind of a, by, just by accident, it happened to be a rehearsal for the makeup I did on Dustin Hoffman and Little Big Man where I had to make him 121 years old. Uh, on Jonathan, because he was so old, one of the key things is how do you make really old looking eyelids? After all, the eyes are the most important feature. And old people have these really droopy, wrinkly eyelids. Well, eyelids of that sort had never been made before that really worked like real eyelids, that, that folded and unfolded, that blinked. So I, I worked very hard to develop that and partially succeeded with Jonathan. But it gave me the experience in order to do it even better on Dustin Hoffman. And then, when years later, uh, the scene with Jonathan was repeated in the Dark Shadows movie, I actually used the eyelids I made for Dustin Hoffman. I put them on Jonathan. So he kind of got paid back in the long run. After the early uh, TV Dark Shadows uh, makeup on Jonathan and Frid, uh, Dan asked me to work on his production of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I believe there were some other aging um, uh, makeups that were required for other uh, parts of the series. Uh, I'm not familiar with them. I wasn't involved with them. I don't know the reasons. Uh, maybe I wasn't available.